Welcome to our video on the overview of the installation of Tracket. Today we will cover prerequisites, things you should consider before you install, as well as point you to the documentation where you can read more about this type of information. We will go through each of the install screens and talk about each of the options and why you might select one thing or another and explain some of the areas that may be a little bit more complex. To get started here, let's talk about real quickly where can you go for more information? You can go to our documentation website at docs.bmc.com. The link is right there. Don't worry if you forget that link. You can also get to the help once the product is installed by just clicking help within Trackit. And once the installer starts, almost every installation screen has a help link at the bottom, which will get you to this page. And on that page, you can see system requirements or links to system requirements, install instructions, admin, usage, configuration information, and as well as some uh, free video training that we've put together for Trackit. If you're new to Trackit, some other great places to go for help and assistance, the Trackit community, this is a great place uh, to go and talk with other users. We even have Trackit tech support agents that uh, read posts out there and respond. If you really need tech support from us, you can find the phone numbers and ways to contact us through the support portal. You can just go to support.trackit.com and it'll direct you there. If you forget all of these links, just remember trackit.com. If you go there, you'll be able to find links to other places and phone numbers to give us a call if you need some more assistance. Okay, let's take a look at system requirements for installation. We're gonna talk about system requirements pretty high level because some of the specifics do tend to change sometimes depending on operating system versions and browser versions and things like that. In general, you do need to have a server class operating system for Trackit. For today's example, we're gonna use Windows Server 2012. Trackit is also a web application, so you do need to make sure IIS is installed on your server. If the Trackit installation detects that IIS is not installed, it will go ahead and warn you about it and then try to enable it for you. Trackit uses a SQL Server database on the back end. You're welcome to use your own SQL Server if you like, install your own version of SQL Express with advanced services, or allow our installation to download and install SQL Express with advanced services for you. Please keep in mind, if you're going to use your own database, we recommend you use the full version of SQL Server, or if you're going to use SQL Express, please use the SQL Express with advanced services. The reason for this is advanced services contains additional text indexing features that our product requires in order to function properly. You will need a local administrator account during the installation to make sure that the install can access and perform all the actions that it requires. And keep in mind, you may need a reboot of the server at the end of installation, so you'll want to plan to make sure nobody is connected and using other systems on that same server while you're installing. For the latest system requirements, you can visit the docs link at the bottom of this page. So when you start out, uh, you should be on a server operating system, and you should have a Trackit installer file. And you should also have a Trackit license file, which should have an LICX extension. The name of it might differ, it might have the name of your company in it, or it might just say track it, but it should be an LICX file that you've received from BMC. You should also have a BMC client management license, which is an XML file, and that will contain any licenses you have for inventory or remote for the asset management part of Trackit. This version of Trackit actually comes with BMC client management, so you'll see during the installation that you have an option to install that. If you already own BMC Client Management, you could skip that step and then configure Trackit afterwards to point to your existing instance of BMC Client Management. But for this example today, we're going to go ahead and run through the entire installation, including BMC Client Management, just as a brand new customer would. So first thing, we're going to go ahead and kick off our installer here. It'll take a moment for it to extract the files and actually start the setup. It's very likely Windows will give you a prompt like this unless you've disabled your user account control. So of course you can go ahead and say yes. Then we also ask you if, if you're sure you want to continue the setup. So you can go ahead and click yes. And now the files will begin extracting out of the system. So one of the first prompts here is for which language you want to use. And this language setting here applies to the Trackit server itself. So if you pick German here, it's going to install your Trackit server in German, and all the screens will be in German. This does not apply to the installation itself. The installation itself should uh, read settings from the computer system that you're on and show the appropriate language for that region or locale. But this is actually the setting for 
the language that you want your Trackit server to run in. I'm going to keep English and go ahead and click Next. Next we get kind of the typical welcome message and we call out here that the help link at the bottom is available to you. So you should see the help link throughout the installer and that'll take you to the online documentation in case you have any questions. I'm just going to go ahead and say next on the welcome screen here. This is kind of the typical license agreement screen you see with most software. I'm going to go ahead and click yes to agree to that. Now I come to my first real decision point, which is whether I want to do a standard installation or an evaluation install. So standard is what most customers are going to use. Standard is going to lay down everything the way it would be for a brand new installation that somebody is going to put into production. Now, if you're just evaluating the product and you just want to see what it looks like and you want to have some sample data in there and go into like a 30 day trial mode, then you can click on evaluation and go that route. For this video today, I'm going to go ahead and select standard because the standard one will show us all the install options. Click next. Now the installer wants to know what I want to install on this server. So I don't have Trackit installed at all, so of course I need to create a new Trackit database. I need to install the Trackit application server itself so that I can use the product. And I want to install BMC client management for my asset management. So I'm going to leave all three of these checked because this is a brand new install for me. And that brings us to our license selection screen. So if you don't have licenses, don't panic. It's not a big deal. You can go ahead and go through with the install. If you just leave these blank, it'll go ahead and use a temporary 30-day trial license for the product. So you could go ahead and install with this, and then after you get your licenses from BMC, then you could go ahead and put them into the product through the uh, configuration. But just to show you how this would work, if you do have a license, I'm going to uncheck Use Temporary License. I'm going to click Browse. I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to pick my Trackit license. Click Open. And then I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this one as well. And I'm going to go and pick my BMC Client Management License. And then I'm going to click Next. I'm going to leave the default install path, but of course you could change that if you'd like. That brings us to our database server options. So if you have an existing SQL Server on your network you want to use, you could go ahead and keep this first option enabled and hit Next. If you don't have a SQL Server on your network and you want to use the free Microsoft SQL Express version, you can click on this radio button here and that will go ahead and download Microsoft SQL Express and install it for you. So I'm going to click on Use Existing SQL Server first, just so I can show you what those options look like. I click Next. It's going to ask you for typical things you would need if you're installing a database, like the name of the SQL Server, the database name you want to create, the port number if you want to specify that. Uh, the installer will try to figure it out if you don't specify. And then, of course, the uh, SQL Server credentials so that it can connect. So you'd fill all that stuff out, hit next, and then it would go ahead and create the database. So for this example, though, I'm going to back up. I'm going to say download and install Microsoft SQL Express 2012 and hit next. Now I get a warning that says, hey, this is going to take a little while because it's a big file. Are you sure you want to do that? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And then I'm going to sit back and wait for that file to be downloaded. After SQL Express finishes downloading, you'll get a screen like this that asks you to specify an admin password for your new SQL Server. So I'm going to go ahead and enter one here. You need to keep track of this password because it is the main administrator password for your new SQL Server. So if you ever need to get in there for admin access to do queries or look at data or do any kind of troubleshooting or to install updates or anything like that, you're going to need to remember that password. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And now the SQL Express setup is going to extract the files and start running. The SQL Express install takes a little while to run, so we'll have to wait for that to complete before the track it setup will continue. Now that the SQL Server is done installing, we need to answer some questions about the virtual directories we want to use. So on this particular web server, I only have one website, the default website, so that's why that's selected here. If I had multiple websites on this server, I would see them listed here. And if I wanted to put my track it and self-service sites underneath a different site than the default site, I could pick a different one here. You'll notice there are two URLs that we can configure for track it. One is the technician login and one is the self-service login. This is the server name here on the left. And the default is just track it, 
for the name of the technician website. So the website will be the server name slash track it. And the default self-service URL is the server name slash track it slash self-service. Now you'll notice if I change these, it updates the URL that is shown here. So if I change track it to track it HD, like for track it help desk, it changes the root URL of self-service. So self-service will always be below the track it site. So you can customize these however you want. I'm just going to keep the defaults for now. And I'm going to go ahead and click next. At this point, I'm being prompted for an administrative user on my server that I'm installing on. Now this user needs to have administrative access to this local system, but it does not need to have domain admin access. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in a password for this because it automatically detected my account. And my account does have local admin privileges. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Now we get a summary screen here that basically summarizes all the settings that we've selected so far. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And the installer is now going to work on creating the website, creating the database tables in the SQL server that we've installed, and setting up all the settings for the application. So this is going to take several minutes to complete. You'll notice during the installation at some point, it'll mention installing the BMC Client Management Master Server. And that is important because that's part of the Trackit Asset Management module now. And many times at the end of the installer here, we'll get a reboot message. So I'm going to go ahead and allow it to restart. Now we see one of the final screens in the installer here. This is talking about the default administrator account. It's uh, by default administrator and the password is welcome. Now this is true for any new technician or self-service account that you create in the system as well. So when you create new accounts in the system, the first time you log in, the password will be welcome and you'll be prompted to reset your password to something that you would prefer. So I am asked to acknowledge that I understand this Click next to continue. And now I get the option to launch either the Trackit Technician website or the Trackit Self-Service website. I'm going to check on both just because I want to make sure they both come up. I'm going to hit finish. And we get a message here that the installation was successful and that we should restart our server before using the product. But it also mentions here you don't need to restart if it's already been restarted during the installation process. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK to that. And now my new website should load up. So the first time the site comes up, this is the self-service page. So if you had self-service users, they could log in here and uh, submit tickets and view the status of their tickets and so on. And the technician side is going to look something like this. And remember during our installation, the default password was welcome. So we're going to go ahead and enter that and hit enter. And now we get a message that says your password's expired. Please change your password and log in again. So we're going to type in welcome, type in a new password. And now I've got my new password. So we're going to go ahead and enter that and log in. And here we go. So that is an overview of the Trackit installation. For more videos in our free training series, check out our Trackit documentation site at docs.bmc.com. To interact with other Trackit users and discuss best practices and usage scenarios or common questions, check out the Trackit community accessible by visiting community.trackit.com. For any kind of technical support resources, software downloads, license downloads, etc., you can visit our support page at support.trackit.com. If you forget all of these links, the only one you really need to remember is trackit.com because you can find all the other pages just by visiting there. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.